Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella, and today we're going to be making another twig bed, but this is the one that I had promised originally that is made with a vintage sewing card. So in my last video, I just uploaded this one to YouTube. Uh, it has, it's just made solely out of twigs, and I also include the bedding, and the link to that bed is in the pin comment below. So today we're going to do another twig bed, but we're going to do it out of a cardstock of your choice. Or if you happen to have a needle card like this one here, I believe these are from the 1950s and uh, there's Harriet's needles there. It had a nice image of a cat that I liked. This one here is the same era. I just didn't want to use this one because it has the three ladies and it wouldn't really go with any of the dollhouses that I make. But regardless, whatever you can find to make your headboard out of will work. I was even thinking about old postcards. They're, they're about the same thickness. Those would work great as well. All right, so with that cardstock, we're going to be inserting them into the twigs, and the twig size is totally up to you. The one I make today is a thicker twig. The one I made back in 2012 is a thinner twig. So along with your cardstock of your choice, you need twigs, of course. You're going to need tacky glue, something to cut your twigs with. So if they're small twigs, you can use scissors or garden shears. I'm also using twine in this video, but it's not necessary. You can get by totally without the twine. And for the mattress board, I'm using an old book cover, but of course you can use cardboard. And with that, we want a couple of clamps and binder clips come in handy. And of course you want an X-Acto knife. All right, my friends, we're about to get started. This bed that I'm pointing to right now is made the exact same way I made this one in my hand. Okay, they're done the exact same way. They're just different sizes. So everything is completely adjustable to whatever size you wanna make it. This bed here, the headboard, is just about five inches tall and the footboard is about three inches tall and the bed boards that hold the cardboard or the book cover is four inches long and the width of the card is about three inches wide now this is actually inserted into the twig so I'm taking that into account as well all right my friends let's get started we're gonna start cutting down our image so whatever size you want to make it. Uh, this card here is the exact same size that I used to make the bed that I'm showing you today. Um, so I just cut off the bottom smaller than the top because the top's going to be the headboard. Okay, I'm going to notch out the side because it, the sides have to be inserted into the twigs. So I'm going to make a little notch here. At the same time, I'm going to round out the top. You can do whatever you want to do with this um, part. You can make it pointy or whatever you can use. Uh, fancy scissors and make a decoration type cut. I'm just doing your basic rounded top and then notching out the side here. The one thing I would have liked to have done over again is where I cut the image because the bedding kind of covers the image a little bit on the headboard so keep that in mind as you're building yours. And these two sides have to be the exact same height. I also have to make a mirror image of that those cuts into my uh, footboard because they have to be inserted into twigs as well and you want them to be the same width. So there's my headboard and my footboard and we're ready to get started. My sticks are all five and a half inches long. This is the headboard and the footboard and I just even them out. You can see that I'm holding them up against the ruler just to make sure that they're all even and this height is adjustable for yourself of course. I just marked off a half an inch and I have to um, insert this card. So you can see I made a little indent in my card there and that part's gonna be inserted into the sticks. So I'll hold the card at the very bottom where that mark is and then I'll mark off the top of the card, the part that's gonna be inserted into the stick. And then holding the stick at the top with a pair of pliers I'm going to run my X-Acto blade from the top mark to the bottom mark and I'm going to go slowly and as straight as I can and I'm going to keep going over this mark a little bit on the side as well. I'm trying to make an indent in there, right? Trying to get that space in there for the card. And now dry fitting it, I can see that I need a little bit more space in there. Now I could keep going over this with the X-Acto blade and that's what I did with my first bed. I didn't even own a Dremel when I made the first one, but the Dremel will make it go faster. The thing is when you do use a Dremel, make your marks with the X-Acto blade first. Otherwise your Dremel will have the tendency just to go wherever it wants to go. <laughs> so it's a lot easier if you have the indent already in there. Okay, so I just need to take a little nick off the top of that card and this will fit a lot better. So I have to do the other side the exact same. So I'll take a measurement there. It's about one and three quarters inches. So I gotta get this side the same height 
So I'll just take a little notch off here. Now for the other side, same thing, holding it with pliers and then cutting it slowly and as straight as I can with the X-Acto blade. I was just rubbing off the pen mark there. All right, and I'll do a final dry fit to make sure it's going to work. And yes, that's going to work. So I'm going to fill in the slits themselves with tacky glue. And I'll make sure that that tacky glue is completely in the slit and I'll take off the excess. And now I just have to insert the card. I'm going to double check that I have a half an inch still underneath that card and the bottom of the uh, stick. And now I'm adding a cross piece in between the two sticks. And I should have paid attention to the size of this one because I have to do one for the footboard. And I end up having to make a correction, which is not a big deal, but just keep that in mind as you're watching. This is what the bed boards are going to be sitting on. And the bed boards is going to connect the headboard and the footboard together. So this is a pretty straight and flat stick. I just have to remove a couple of bumps with the X-Acto blade. And now attaching this with tacky glue and a couple of clamps to make sure you have full contact between the stick and the card. And it only takes about 20 minutes for the tacky glue to grab on and then you can remove the clamps. Now for the back piece, I had to shave this one down quite a bit, you can see, to make it flat enough to um, sit on the back. Now nothing's gonna be sitting on this back piece, so it doesn't really matter the height of it or anything. So again, with the tacky glue and a couple of clamps to hold it together until that glue grabs on. And now for the footboard. Now my card is exactly the same width as the headboard card, of course. I forgot to notch it out, uh, so I had to just kind of guess how, how much to notch there. So I'm going to take this one piece, because I rounded out the top, so I'm going to take the one piece and just kind of trace it out on the other side so I can get the exact same um, rounded edge on the top. Okay, so I'm just going to double check that I have the same height of those notches there. And then it's all the same process that we just went through for the headboard. And I did leave that sit for a while and let that glue dry. And it's pretty stuck in there. You can see I'm pulling on it pretty good there. But now I'm going to add this little decorative piece in the front. This is the footboard, but it's gonna be seen from the front side. And I thought this branch was great because it's got the extra piece going up. Add a little bit of whimsy. And of course it has to be shaved down in certain places more than other places. And I have to notch out both ends because they're gonna be sitting on the footboard sticks themselves. So I have to notch out the footboard sticks as well. So I'll just make an indent with my X-Acto blade. So I actually make two indents, okay? So those indents are as wide as the stick that's gonna sit on top. So once I have the indents in there, I can just shave in between the two indents. Then I don't have to worry about splitting my stick or anything like that. So the indents themselves are kind of like a guide, okay? So, and that, that makes the job a lot easier. So you can see the stick just fit right inside there nicely. But I want the stick to sit flat on the card. You can see that it wasn't yet, so I have to shave down the other side, make this indent a little bit deeper. So yeah, you just have to keep fiddling with it and go slowly and just take off little bits at a time. You don't want to take off too much, of course, until you get it to sit perfectly flat. And by flat, I just mean you want full contact between the stick and the card. You don't want to have to bend the card to the stick. So you want everything just to sit nicely on top of that card. And then set the clamps on there and let it dry. All right, so the stick that you're looking at right there is just decorative, and the one that goes in the back is the one that the bedboards are gonna be sitting on top of. And the bedboards connect the headboard to the footboard. So it has to be thick enough for those boards to sit on top. So again, attaching with tacky glue and a couple of clamps to make sure you have full contact between the card and the stick. And then with burnt umber, I added about three coats on each of these uh, white backs and it took about three coats because it was so white. I also do the edges as well. In between each coat of paint I dry it with my hair dryer. It doesn't take that long but it's just better to dry it as fast as possible. You don't want the cardstock to be sitting with wet paint too long. And like I said that took about three coats. Once those were dry I dry brush on soft suede just to give it like a texture of wood. And then I also dry brush on some black. And again, this is very lightly done. And once I have all that done, I take the black again and I edge out anywhere the stick is touching the cardstock. So it looks like a shadow, like it gives it more depth and it also ages it as well. This gives it a lot more character. 
for structural strength of the headboard, I'm going to be adding a diagonal piece in the back side. So this won't be seen. I still want it to look nice, of course. I did flatten it out where I needed to. It's touching both sticks, so it's going to add some strength. And there's a little bit of a gap right here. Uh, I shaved off too much. So I'm going to add in some tacky glue and some shavings of my wood. So I have full contact with that diagonal piece and my headboard piece. Full contact with glue and shavings of wood. So once that glue is dry, I have a solid connection between both sticks. So now I'm just going to add a little bit more of a decorative piece. It's also going to add a little bit more strength. And again, I had to fill in a little bit of a gap there. So tacky glue and some wood shavings. And then I'm adding another piece at the top. And again, it's going to go diagonal. Oh, I was just showing here where I kind of rounded it out so it would sit up against the stick perfectly. It's rounded out there. Add some tacky glue on both ends, of course. Now, remember in the beginning where I said I put the wrong height stick here on the headboard? It should have matched the footboard because my two boards that are going to be connecting the footboard to the headboard are going to be running across, connecting the headboard and the footboard together. Now, if they're not the same height, my mattress is going to be higher on one end. So I just need to add a filler piece here and I had to shave both sides of this stick to make it flat, add my tacky glue, and I'm going to hold this together with binder clips until that glue is dry. So these two sticks now on the headboard and the footboard are the same height. So these boards here that connect these two, these ones, are going to be running across. So I notched out each end and those notches are pretty much the same depth and then I shaved the top of them flat with my X-Acto blade because I'm going to be gluing a board on top once this is all dry here. So you can see I'm, my headboard's leaning up against the brick because I want it to, to sit up straight as it's drying. Now I need to set something heavy on top so those uh, two boards have full contact with the headboard and the footboard as it's drying. All right, so in my last video, I showed you how I did slats across using sticks. Uh, but for this bed, I'm actually going to use a book cover, just like I did for the original bed that I made in 2012. So that's a book cover right there. And it's a very thin wood in between canvas. And I like to use uh, things that I have on hand. And I use the pages out of this book to actually wallpaper the vintage suitcase dollhouse. So I'm saving the cover for another project, but I'm going to use the back of the book to provide the board underneath my mattress. And I'm going to notch out each corner so it can uh, fit around the sticks of my headboard and my footboard. And then a full bead of tacky glue along each board and I'll just set my book cover on top of there. And to get full contact between the book cover and the boards, I'm going to use binder clips on each side. I'll leave it for about 30 minutes or so and then I'll carry on to the next step. So the cardstock here on the headboard and the footboard is the same thickness as my sewing card that I used in 2012. I have never had an issue with it breaking or anything because I'm the only one who touches it. If you're giving yours to a smaller person who, you know, you don't want to have to worry about it. You don't want them to have to be so careful. If you have a straight piece of cardstock, then you can put sticks there. But since I don't, I have a rounded piece. I'm going to use twine. Twine, once it's dry, once you get the, once you get it fully saturated with the glue and then stick it where you want it to, to go, once it's dry, it's as strong as wood. Okay, so once I get it on there and I let it dry for about 15-20 minutes so it's not the glue isn't, isn't uh, sticking to my fingers anymore, then I can uh, fiddle around with it a little bit more like I'm doing here. So I got it to push down a little bit more than it was when I first stuck it on there. But don't forget about it because once the twine is dry and totally cured, you're not going to be able to move it. So you have about a 20-30 to 30 minute window where you can uh, play around with it a little bit more. All right, so my headboard and footboard are still a little bit wobbly, so it's going to need some stability there. And I'm going to use twine. You can use sticks, of course. I'm going to use twine. So I'm going to be sticking twine right in the gap underneath the, the uh, book board that I have there. And in between the book board and my slats, there's a big gap. So my twine actually fits perfectly inside that gap. It's the same width and everything. So I'll just shove it in there, and then I, once I push it in there, get it all the way down, then I'll put another bead of tacky glue along the top, and then rub that all the way in. And I'll do this on the headboard and the footboard. And I'm going to be adding twine right here on the headboard as well. And I can tell you now that the bed is, is completely dry. There is no wobble in my bed at all. It's really strong. So this twine has done a great job. So tacky glue, twine, and then tacky glue over top of that. And to 
avoid having any sheen from the glue once it's dry. Uh, wipe it off wherever you don't want that glue to be seen. And again, here at the footboard, bead of tacky glue, piece of twine, and then tacky glue over top of that. And my footboard was really wobbly here when I was doing, doing this. You can see I'm trying to hold it together the best I can. Uh, once it was cured, like I said, no wobble at all. So now I'm going to add my twine on the edge of the footboard as well. And a little bit of extra glue never hurts anything. I had a little bit of a space there between the twine and the cardstock. So you can see pretty wobbly there. So I'm going to just let this dry for about 30 minutes before I play around with it anymore. And that actually concludes the building of the bed itself. If you need help making a mattress and a bedspread and all that kind of stuff, you can go to the pinned comment below and I'll have a link there. You can go to that link and the video itself will have timestamps so you can jump to the bedding of that video. Okay, so again, that's in the pinned comment below. And if you would like to make a canopy for your bed, like I have here, I continue working on the bed in the next video, so that's part two. So I'll make a canopy, I also install some lights, and I'm really happy with how this bed turned out. So again, if you'd like to see how I, how I do this bed, how I finish it off, then you'll need to go to that video. And that should be popping up on your screen somewhere. And if it's not popping up on the screen, then just look in the pinned comment below and look for part two. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to give that thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one.